Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video I will show you the difference, the advantages and disadvantages of linking Excel to PowerPoint versus embedding Excel in PowerPoint. It is not the same to link or embed charts, slicers and Excel tables. I will discuss how to link and embed all three. At the end of the video how to manage and update the link in case it is broken. So on this sheet I have various pivot tables with one chart filtered with a slicer. To link the chart, select and copy. Go to PowerPoint, Excel will show various space options to choose from. If it doesn't for some reason, you can access them by clicking on the drop down menu in the ribbon. For this chart, I will choose to paste, keep source formatting and link data. The chart placed is now linked to the Excel sheet. Any changes I make in the Excel sheet will be updated on the PowerPoint chart. This applies for format and content. The other option is to link the chart, but adjust it to the format theme and style you chose in PowerPoint. This means the chart will automatically be formatted based on the theme you chose for PowerPoint. The same cannot be done for slicers. Slicers can only be pasted as independent pictures in PowerPoint. For the second example, I will copy the chart and paste it as an embedded copy as well as a linked copy. When pasting charts, PowerPoint integrates the chart elements from Excel to PowerPoint. This way you can format the chart elements, meaning axes, labels, grid lines and more directly within PowerPoint. You have the same options available in Excel. Once you apply a format within PowerPoint, the format linked to Excel will be broken, which means if you change the format in Excel, the chart in PowerPoint will not update. Only the data will be updated in the chart. If the data does not update, select the chart, go to the chart design tab and refresh the data. I will select and copy a table from my sheet, then paste and embed a copy in PowerPoint. Now the Excel file containing the table will be part of PowerPoint and independent from the original file. I will insert a second copy linked to the original file. To do that, I will go to paste special and paste a link of the file. If I change the format of the table in the Excel file, only the link table will update. To change format in the embedded file, double click on it, Excel will open from within PowerPoint. Here you can make adjustments. When you finish, click outside the embedded file. This applies to content and format. To adjust the presentation of the embedded file, you can resize the dashed border. Only the content within the dashed border will be viewed in the PowerPoint sheet. It is not easy to change, but you will get used to it. When embedding, the original Excel file will be integrated within PowerPoint. So if you send the PowerPoint file to someone, they will have access to your spreadsheet and the data it contains that might be for internal use only and confidential. Another aspect I don't appreciate with this method is that it is difficult to zoom in and out as well as expand the Windows content. The last disadvantage of this method is that the Excel file does not connect to your original file. In the worst case, if you have to make adjustments to the data and its presentation, which is often the case in real life, you have to adjust also the Excel file embedded in PowerPoint. For linking Excel files, this is great. While doing the presentation, you can adjust your data, filter the dashboard and the data will be updated in PowerPoint. The disadvantage of this method is that the link between Excel and PowerPoint will break easily. If you rename your file, the link will be broken. If you move your file to a new location, the file path will change and the link will be broken. If you send the file per email to a colleague, the link will be broken. In this case, you have to send both the Excel file and the PowerPoint per email. Your colleague will have to adjust the broken link and the link Excel. I will show you how to do that in the next section. To relink the file again, go to the File tab under Info, Find and Edit Linked Files. Change and update the source.
So to summarize, before you decide which method to use, you have to ask yourself the following questions. Is the data I will present final or do I have to edit, format and update? Will I send the presentation to a second and third part in PowerPoint format? Does my Excel file contain the critical data I don't want to share with others? I hope you found what you were looking for in this tutorial. If yes, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel for more videos. Check out other Excel video tutorials by Swag Academy in this playlist. Thanks for watching.